a good night for us, a really good night. Um, so much of what we needed tonight. Um, so I was really happy with it. Uh, it's Minnesota State teams defending national champs. I like the way they play. I like how they approach the game. Um, you know, they traveled long and hard to get here. And so it was good for us to, to have that experience. Um, there was some flow of the game that was uh, disappointing to us. There were some numbers in the game that we're really, really excited about. And, and uh, it's another chance to grow. So proud of our guys. Mark, as a former, as a former, as a former 6'10 center, what, what makes Andrew Carr different than some other big guys? And also Brandon Garrison, what about his ceiling? Yeah, you know, Andrew Carr is such an elite level decider. Like, he's really a capable decision maker. One, he's a 66%, you know, two point shooter, which is pretty incredible. He shot 38% from the three last year. So he's really wildly efficient at making shots. He makes shots, but he's, he's, he stacks decisions. Um, it was something we saw in film from him last year at Wake Forest where, you know, when he's. Um, turning the ball and someone jumps in the passing lane, he can actually stack a decision where he reads it correctly, gets downhill, gets to two feet, makes another ball fake, and then finally completes a pass or a play. There's not that many guys his size with, the, with his ability to make shots and finish shots that can stack decisions like him. I think he's really special. I think he's really, really difficult to guard as a scorer and as a playmaker. I think he's, 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 he's good in both those areas. And I thought you know he had a real challenge defensively. Um, sometimes when you're playing uh, undersized teams that really shoot it kind of one through four and at times one through five, you know, he's got to race around the floor and guard smaller guys. And I thought his attention to detail on the defensive end was really terrific tonight. It was much improved from uh, his defensive performance was much improved from, from our first exhibition. So I was really proud of him tonight. Uh, Mark, have you ever had a player play with the pace that Kerr plays with? And do you, is there, is there such thing as too fast coming off a made basket or anything, the way he goes like that? Yeah, it's, um, you know, he's such an infusion of energy, right, which is such a beautiful thing. It was a little weird for us tonight. Um, you know, we're getting initial thrust and then Steinman, and we, we just, we our transition from that original thrust into our actions was a little weird. You know, was, we spent 20 minutes on the floor without one of our traditional fives, which is such an important piece for us. And so that was a little weird. But man, he's, um, he's going to be really fun and he's really dangerous. And, and uh, you know, as, 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 as we feel that space uh, more, it's going to be fun. Um, it was really important to get him on the court tonight so, so he could just be out there under the lights. Coach, uh, could you give us an update if you have any on Amari Williams? And then after that, when he was out there, what does it do for your offense when he can pass out of the post like that? He made the behind the back yeah. pass. Yeah. Outside of scoring, defending, what does that passing ability do for you? It's key for us. It's key to everything we do. Um, we run a lot through our bigs. Um, and so, so it's really important. Uh, and he's got a really unique skill set. Um, I think he's doing fine. Uh, you know, I think x-rays came back solid, but there will be more. You know, we'll get some more imaging tomorrow, but we're hopeful that he'll be back soon. Coach, I know that the three-point game is a really big part of your offense. Are you pretty happy with how you guys are kind of shooting the ball uh, offensively right now? And I know, um, you know, Jackson was a huge, huge part of the three games tonight. Yeah. What, what does that kind of say about how he's playing right now? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't really thrilled with us in the first half from the three point line. I felt like it was, um, you know, this happens all the time. It happens to every team I've ever coached. You go bang twenty one, and then you think, ah, oh, we're just gonna, you know, it's it's like, uh, you know, it's a, uh, you know, everything in the supermarket is free. Just grab it and throw it in the bag, right? It's not that. Uh, we did a much better job um, as the game went on about earning shots for each other. And there's a huge difference, and it might be an imperceptible difference when you just isolate shots, but how you earn those shots matters. Like, like the karma of this game matters. It's wildly important. And um, I thought we did a much better job as the game went on. Um, about just just getting back to like, hey, let's go, let's go work on this game and let's go fight to earn each other great shots. There's a there's a big difference. So um, I, I thought we were better as the game went on. Uh, it's a huge part of what we do, and you know, Jax has been playing for me this way for a long time, and clearly he's pretty comfortable. Coach, you talked about the first. Jack, Jack's not shy either, is he? He's not shy at all. 
You talked about in the first half how you guys struggled to shoot. You guys started off two for 13 from beyond the arc. When it's tough to get your shots to fall and to find your open shots, what's your message to your team to keep shooting the ball, especially beyond the arc? Yeah, so it's it, it can vary. Um, you know, for us today, the messaging was, guys, these are not the shots that we take. Again, it's um, it's very nuanced conversation. Uh, you know, you know, we're going to go two for 13 in the first nine minutes sometimes in the three-point line when it is shots that we're earning. And we're going to keep shooting. It's a beautiful way to play. And, you know, uh, what, what BBN is going to learn is they're going to just be like, okay, this is really hard right now, but it's coming. Like, it's coming. And then it's, there will suddenly be a barrage of makes, and it's mayhem and chaos in the, chaos in the gym, and we just know it's coming. Like, we, we train that way. We, we study that way. We work that way. It's really important. There's two things we talk about. One is the way we earn those shots, and the second thing is I was the, 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 probably the thing I was, you know, a place where I was really disappointed uh, was 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 our offensive rebounding work, our commitment to the offensive glass. I think that was a residual. That's an energy thing. And when the game gets a little weird, like our rotation got weird, Amari's deal got weird, it felt a little weird. Our thrust was so intense, and our transition out of the thrust was weird. And so uh, we, we just didn't perform the way we expect to perform on the offensive glass. I think we, I think we only finished with, with six offensive rebounds, which that's not us at all. You know, you think we, you know, we missed 24 threes, um, and we only came up with six offensive rebounds. This is not how we play. So um, we got a little weird there, but that's what we focus on is earning them for each other with great pace and then, and then really, really being effective on the offensive glass. Yeah, Mark, in your opening statement, you mentioned that there were some numbers in the game that you're really excited about. I was hoping that you could maybe just elaborate on yeah. what a few of those are. Yeah, so, you know, this is a possessions game, and, and it's very important to us that we have more possessions. So you think about our guys. So uh, Otega Owe, like this, uh, this, he's never done this before, I'm pretty sure. He was a 6-0 tonight. That's incredible, right? Um, and Kerr Chris, the first, first time under the lights, was a 6-0 tonight. And that's and Lamont Butler. You know, came off a of 09 and was a 5 1 tonight. Those numbers are great. Andrew Carr was a 3 0, uh, which is absolutely terrific. Um, that we're excited about. Colin Chandler was elite level playing off two feet at a 3 0. Um, you know, he was unbelievable getting downhill and playing off two feet for, for a rookie to be a 3 0 guy. Um, in a game that felt weird, there wasn't a real rhythm in this game, so there's a lot of weirdness. And for us to be, you know, for us to be 28 and eight in this game under 10 turnovers is super exciting to me. And, and nearing 30 assists is really important for us. And, and so I'm, I'm really ecstatic about those numbers. We held them to 39% from the field, although we tried, we tried to get them to 40% in the second half, uh, but we held them to 39%, and that's our goal. We want to keep teams at 39% for the field, so we did that effectively. I'm really proud of that. There's a, there's a lot of really good stuff tonight. Uh, Mark, you, when you say the karma of this game matters, what, what, can you expand on that? What, what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, so it's, um, you know, you guys have all been around this. Listen, BBN knows this game. We know this game. We know what it feels like when there's penetration and then you come to two feet and there's a kick and an extra pass and an extra pass and you follow the ball and you know where it's going to end up. You know it's going to end up in the corner. Everybody made the right play and you know that ball's going in and it goes in at some ridiculous, insane uh, percentage of the time. Um, and that's the karma of the game. That's one example of the karma of the game. Like uh, when you play this game right, the game rewards you. It just is. It's a, it's a, it's a living, breathing thing, and, and it's really special. And, and it's partly because our guys know it. You can feel it when you're a player and you're on the floor and, and the ball is going right. And, 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 and the rare occasions where you end up missing that shot, if you're playing right, you end up getting the offensive rebound, right? And that's just, that's just the way this game is for the most part. And so I can give you 100 examples of karma of the game, how it works. But when you play it right, it, it honors you. Coach, you've meant, you mentioned how Otega impressed you this game. It seems that his performances over the last two games have been overlooked due to just some crazy performance, performances from other guys. How much has he meant to this team? And I mean, when it comes, you talk about the assist numbers. I mean, how he's, I think he was one of the highest in the assists. I mean, what, what does he do for this team as a leader? Um, listen, he's. Uh, you know, he's got a calmness about him that's really great. He's got a physicality to the game that's really special. He can hurt you in a lot of different ways. Um, and he's just got a consistency. What's really been brilliant is watching him grow. Like, he's, his game is growing every single day. And he's doing things more consistently than he's ever done them before in his life. And that's really exciting. So he's, 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 he's making a contribution in every possible way. Mark. 
You mentioned down in Birmingham you wanted to see in these two games you guys get exposed a little bit. Was those 12 and a half, first 12 and a half minutes kind of what you were looking for? And what did you make of the response, the 21-3 run? And the yeah, half? it was really important for me. Um, you know, we were hoping to just, we just needed to not feel right. Right. We just needed to be there where we didn't feel quite right. And, and the guys needed to understand like how we lean into fixing it. Not only did they do a decent job in the course of you know, the last six minutes of the first half were, were incredibly solid for our guys, six or seven minutes. And, and so they, they did it by leaning into us, right? By leaning into what we do. We never really, we never really you know, built a happy home there tonight, but, but at least we, we kind of fought to get back to that. And, and lean into us is like 100 different things. But um, so I was proud of that. And then that's something we'll be able to talk about and we're going to get back to. And you know, we're going to be able to talk about the, the poor uh, shooting and, and, and how that ended up and, and you know, how the guys attacked. And it'd be a learning experience for, for and that's what we need because we're going to have you know so many times in this season where things are going to kind of you know we're very much an energy team and we're very closely monitoring the energy of this game and and um, and and so it was important for us to, to get a little weird you know um, game one was just so easy and everything went right the whole night long and and just for us to have a, a just for us to come to the sideline and feel a little bit of frustration was really important and so that'll bode well for us as we move forward terrific team also, super special, I'm going to, this is really important, guys. So these beautiful shoes, these are incredible, right? So these are our special edition, courtesy of Mark Evans. I told you he was the best, and Nike, the greatest shoe ever made, Nike. And these book ones might actually take over. I mean, these are like, this is some type of combination of, of um, like Apple and Nike and everything good in the world, right? They're also, this has got our record 34 and 2 in 1996. Conveniently, book one is chapter one, which is very relevant to us. Super cool. Even the soul has got the, the old, like, the old logo is fire. I'm, am I going to get in trouble for saying that? It's also a very large shoe. I would hand it out, but none of you could wear it. And most importantly, this Devin Booker is a superstar, man. You think about Devin Booker came here and played on one of the great all-time great teams of Kentucky. Never started a game, played 20 minutes a game on a great team that ran the table except one game. And dude's going to be the MVP in the NBA here this year, the next year, the year after. It's incredible. He's a, a great ambassador for this game and certainly a great ambassador for Kentucky. So I thought that was pretty swaggy. I thought I'd show you that. <laughs> it felt good. Have a great night, guys.